attack. It's the feeling. It's the reason that... Hello and welcome to the stream. Today's pre-stream chatter was a very low-key version of uh, the 321 Contact song, 321 Contact in Educational Children's Program. Uh, unless you're one of those people who doesn't like PBS's sort of overly zesty uh, approach to education, in which case, just another sucky thing. Okay, uh, today's uh, stream uh, plan, the README, is completely inaccurate, so I'm pretty happy about that. I did want to say one thing, though. Um, I notice a lot of people are doing uh, COVID-19 graphs. I, I think it's some sort of like sniffles that are going around or something. Um, but the graphs are really stupid because in some cases, they're counting total cases uh, for an area, but they're not adjusting for population. Uh, also, this is another problem. Um, I think I probably whined about this before. Um, there was a time when, I think in the 70s, uh, people decided that kids weren't learning enough geography. Um, so news uh, programs started putting up maps with everything in the hopes that kids would learn geography, but then they went overboard and started using maps to present statistics that make no sense because we have a lot of large states, for example, in the United States, that have a lot of area, but very little, uh, very little population. And that's also where you get those stupid sort of, uh, you know, Trump wins the whole country things because the people who make those graphs uh, either confuse area with population, and keep in mind most of the area in the rural parts of the, the nation are, not, are unowned. They're not owned by Republicans. They're simply owned by the government. Um, and you run into stupid things like that where, you know, Rhode Island, and which is a, has a fairly decent population, is very small in terms of area. And the entire New England states, which are fairly populous, get a very small area. And this was all because we sort of crossed the line into saying maps are useful in showing you where something is, but they're not very useful in showing you density or other factors related to population because maps represent area. And to be perfectly, you know, to be perfectly whiny about this, flat maps can't even represent area uh, accurately. Well, they, they can, but they can't represent both area and direction equally because you can't map a sphere to a flat surface without distortion. That is the, uh, that is one of the results of the Riemann mapping theorem. So really the idea, use maps to show people where things are, great. Every single other use of maps, very, very bad. Uh, that should be stopped and I uh, think I will go on record as saying that the people who misuse maps, misuse intentionally. Now there's some people who do it because they really think they're helping. Uh, and they're stupid, but that doesn't mean that they're bad. But the people who uh, use maps like this to screw people over, especially the, the people who use it to make uh, elections look, uh, you know, distorted. Uh, also, the people who, um, let's just go for everybody who misuses maths and statistics uh, intentionally to deceive people. I, I hope they get the COVID-19 virus, and I hope they die from it. Uh, or they just get very, very sick and never recover. Uh, now, of course, the current stats show that that is unlikely, both because the virus itself is not spreading very quickly, despite what people are trying to convince us of, and also uh, because the death rate is maybe 11%, but even that might be a bit high because uh, people die before they recover, so the, the death count is always ahead of the recovery count. Okay, so that was approximately three or four minutes worth of winding there. Uh, now we will go ahead and do none of this stuff here. Um, actually, I did at some point complete the other occultation computations. Um, and let's, I guess, I wasn't going to do this, but let's take a brief look at those. Um, because we do have one that is maybe sort of interesting. Uh, by which I mean um, we might be able to, to, to fuck with somebody with it. Um, maybe with uh, either CalSky or maybe even with the IOTA, which is, you know, occultations.org, the International Occultation Timing Association, and tell them they're big poopy heads for missing this. By the way, that is the correct term, uh, International Occultations Timing Association. Uh, not the correct term, of course, poopy head. So anyway, here they are. Um, you'll still notice that many of these results uh, will say there's no radius, which is fine, because these are, um, uh, this body I'm pretty sure here is actually a comet, which we could get a radii for, maybe. Uh, but, but at the moment, we were more interested with the small bodies or asteroids, as the case was. We don't have that one on record, but that's okay. Um, so I think I found one of these. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's.
let's, let's go ahead and do this. Let's do, I don't think I created a sort minus whatever of these. So let's look at one of these so I remember which column we're looking at. Um, and this, by the way, only lists within six degrees. So it doesn't list every single crossing. Um, so okay, so I think the thing we're looking for here, separation in degrees, one, two, three, four, five. So we'll do this. Um, results text. There, there is going to be an issue. We're going to need a minus u here as well. Uh, there's going to be an issue here because the moon is going to take up most of these. And wow, okay. So actually, let's just make this into um, um, Pomodoro time, but we always skip the first one. Okay. Um, I'll call this, well, let's see now. I'll call this all one uh, because um, it is all of them, and I, but I don't, I want, I want to exclude the moon. So what I want to do is grep minus v space 301 space all one to create all, well, you would guess two. Uh, now all two is where we're going to see something maybe interesting. Uh, the interesting thing we're seeing here is what the hell? Oh, cool. The sun, I apparently didn't realize, occults uh, some stars as well. Um, how did that not show up the first time? Anyway, so maybe we should also grep minus V, uh, the sun, which is ob object ID two, 10. Okay, so what's interesting here is these are some occultations that appear to be occurring um, this year, because uh, the, all of these are for this year, um, of visibly bright stars. In fact, we should probably go with this one here, because this one has the brightest star. And yet, no one seems to be pointing it out. So that's, that's the question is what's going on here. Uh, so this is August 17th. Let's go ahead and write, write some notes down here. Um, do I have a readme occultations? Probably not. Um, nah, I'll just go ahead and make some notes here. So what we're looking for is this one here. That's a fairly bright star that's being occulted. Uh, this, is mon this is the time this is at, uh, early, early morning on Monday. So it still hasn't occurred yet, which is good. So we can still rub it into people's faces. Um, the object here is this one, and that's the one we, I don't know what that is right off the top of my head, but we should be able to find out. Ooh, shininess. Okay, that's okay, we can still get it. Um, so it's not one of the common NAFE IDs, it is going to be uh, one of the ones that's probably in, uh, let's clean this up a bit. It's going to be probably in one of the ones that is, um, I think, too too big to put here. Um, uh, although if I have it in BC Max, uh, if I have it in, um, yeah, let's take a look here real quick. I think we ended up putting it in here because it was not that big. Oh, uh, maybe it's in Spice Meta. Uh, okay. Let's see. Jupiter moons. Okay, Mars. Da, 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 da. Um, I remember I had to make my own one because there are, um, oh, there's too many asteroids if you add all of them from the small body list. Small body, let's see, small body, BC parse small body database. That's nice. Um, and let's see. Yeah, and unfortunately the small body database was too big to put here. Uh, but we did get from it everything that Spice knows about. Um, so I guess it's kind of weird that Spice knows about um, knows about this body ID, uh, but doesn't have its name. Actually, that's not weird because there's a lot of things Spice knows about, but doesn't have a name for. And we don't actually need the name for anything. We, it's more of a um, so we can look it up in Stellarium or something. Nef IDs. Okay, yeah, there it is. Not very exciting. So what we're looking for here is. Um, in this file, we're trying to see where this is, and there's an issue here, but we can get around it. And that is, we're looking for the second file, the SPKID, the, the Spice ID, um, to be equal to the number we're looking for, which I forgot, but that's okay. Pro minus F, so separating by a comma, let's make sure we're getting the right one, and this should give us the, the second field. Awesome. Um, 
So while we have saved dollar sign F1 equal equal um, whatever I was looking for, which is this one, and then we can print the whole line. So let's see what that di that is. Dido or Dido. D I D I O. I don't, I don't know why I said that. Okay. So Dido is going to be occulting a 3.78 uh, magnitude star. Maybe. Uh, and presumably the occultations people don't know about it. So we can F with them a little bit. You're so dumb, you would know if your hand was occulting your face. I, I don't really have a good insult for them yet. I need to figure out why the hell this only runs on certain um, certain screens and not others. No. <sighs> okay. Whoa, that one's supposed to happen. Okay, maybe it's in this one. Yeah, we'll find it. One of these days. Okay, I don't, again, I don't know why it works in some places and not in others. I'm guessing it's an environment very environment environment variable issue now first of all let's see if we even know about dido we do not thus tragedy has already struck 209 wow mm. okay so this is kind of cool um how are we going to do this then well, I, I don't know if you can add asteroids to um to solarium but i guess we're gonna find out It's almost suspicious how it do what I was trying to do. Okay. Mm hmm Minor planet center system. Okay. La 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 la. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay. There might be a plug-in or something. So let's go back and look at that. Probably shouldn't have closed it up anyway. Um, a little bit slow there, Solarium. Actually, quite a bit slow. Okay, so let's look for our, our little plug-in here. Uh, solar system objects. No show trail, show planet. Nope, nomenclature. Well, okay. Um, so it's not here, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, there are other places that there are options. Not there, though. Wait. Where my options go? Um, oh, yeah, F2. Um, let's see if plugins has an asteroids plugin. I'm not seeing it. But it might be called minor planets or something. Um, not really looking for artificial satellites yet, although that would be an interesting thing to do as well. Um, interesting. Okay, well, let's let's actually just go ahead and look at the um, the star in question, which is um, I think. Um, going to be the star that is I that number inside of the HYG catalog, which is not the same as um, in the HYP catalog. Um, oh, why am I doing this? This is really, I should just be doing a grep, but I'm crazy that way. Um, nope. In fact, I definitely should be doing a So we're looking for this with commas on either side. And we have, nope, 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 nope. It's going to be with a comma afterward. What? That's Z grep. And this has to be beginning of line because the, the first thing in the line is the, um, yeah, 36046 is the hip ID. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's find that.
And there it is, Iota Gemini. And so the question is, well, question number one is, of course, um, what does it look like on August 17th? It might be too close to the sun now that I think about it. Um, yep, it's certainly not looking too good there. Uh, okay. Well, no, wait a minute. It's not that close to the sun. Okay, so now... Here's where it gets tight. Uh, we know Iota Gemini's um, uh, right ascension and declination, which is changing for some reason. Uh, but we know it's J2000 right ascension and declination. Um, oh, that's the hour angle. Never mind. Uh, and we will stop time here. So now our claim is going to be that the asteroid Dido at that time uh, will be very, very close to this position. Close enough, in fact, that given its radius, its uh, physical radius, it should actually touch over Iota Gemini. Um, so... Now, I'm going to go ahead and look at occultations.org again to see what they have listed in this general time area. Okay. Um, trying to find their calendar. Okay, come on. Observing... There we go. Predictions. Major planets and their satellites, which we're not looking for. Occultation predictions. Okay. And I hope I've seen this before because I've oh wow, okay. Um so maybe this is the thing I should have been looking at earlier. Um But I think I've figured out there was no really bright stars being occulted. Oh, Except, of course, this thing stops at May 15th. Um, um, okay. This is... I think I have not seen this before. Um, this is ugly. So we're looking for, but unfortunately I think this isn't going to go far enough for us. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, let's see where this is actually going here. 2020 May 2nd. Yeah, this is not going to go far enough for us. Um... So, disappointingly, I still haven't found a contradiction yet. Um, upcoming events. All events. Oh, nice. Okay, good. So now we have... We might have a rediscovery on our hands here. August 17th, 2020. Um, here we are. The minor planet in question should be Dido. But let's just see what the... Um, Star magnitude. Well, they don't have anything listed here that is uh, really bright. Um, interesting. Interesting. I don't think you can sort sort by star mag, but certainly these are all fairly big numbers, meaning the stars are fairly dull because magnitude is um, gets higher the duller the dimmer the star gets. So it does not look like we have any really bright stars being occulted here. So now the question is, do they know it's Christmas? No, no, no. Do they know about the, the planet Dido at all? Or 209, as they might call it. They do not appear to. Now, in theory, I could download everything here. Oh, I'm evil. And see if they ever mention Dido. Actually, this might not be a bad idea to download everything here. There should be a way to download this whole thing, right? Without having to scrape. 
So I wonder if Asteroid Occultation, which appears to be a different site, by the way. Uh, okay. I'm going to do something really terrible now. Uh, and it might not work, which is even makes it even worse. If you're going to screw someone and you don't get what you want out of it, worse than screwing someone and getting what you want. I'm going to hurt a W get minus M this site and hope it's not too big, so I can get all of these um, occultations without having to download them one at a time, or write my own little program. Let's see what this does, though. Okay, 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016. Okay, I don't know if we're going back in time, but okay, it looks like a whole bunch of them. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't want to... Jesus Christ, there's a lot of them. Um, and I think maybe they're giving more detail for the ones in 2021. Oh yeah, they've got a map, they've got a details page. So we are really screwing them over and not being very nice about it. Uh, I don't think they have a cookies file because WGET would have respected that. Uh, but pretty soon here we will have um, all of the occultations, but we already have the ones we want for the year 2020. And we can now already, in the process of screwing them over, see if we have... Okay, this is how uh, WGET does things. Uh, and we can see if they ever know about Dido at all. Oh, they do. Okay, so this is not news to them. Um, they just don't think that Dido will be occulting on the day that I say it will be occulting. They don't think that it's going to occult on uh, August uh, 17th of this year, like I think it will. So that is something we can... Um, Now that is something we can actually get from another program, one of the rare cases where we can actually use something I've done um, without having to write a new program. Um, I think BC Equator Dump, uh, if I've written it correctly, for one of all, it should tell me what the, yeah, there it is, observed. So the observed here will be um, the, the, the asteroid 209, which is Dido. The observer will be between us, the Earth. Start year will be 2020, end year will be 2021. I think this gives it us an hourly position. Which it probably does, but also it... Okay. Okay, so this gives us an hourly... Oh, this is Julian Days. Okay, that's fine. Um, So this gives us the name of the object, which is fine. The Julian Day, the something, the something, and the something. Kind of wish I had labeled my fields, but you know how it is. There, there are other versions of this that are um, that do more or less than this, but this is the version I think that does what I need. Although it does not uh, give the output, it does not tell me what the output fields are. Okay, right ascension. Oh, and the angle between Earth and the the observation planet the, the angle between the sun the earth and the observation planet which is kind of useful but not really okay so we're looking for um don't think i have j to d here j day j to d yeah um i wonder i wonder if there's a way to get julian date out of date i don't think there is but Okay. Okay, hang on. Um, let's get our good friend Mathematica to do something with this. Oh, come on, you son of a bitch. Convert Julian Day. JD2, nope. Ah. Okay, I do have these somewhere. I kind of need to fix this a little bit, I guess. Um, in fact, I know, I know I have it because I actually put it in here, uh, where I do JD2. Um, 
Wow, I don't have a Unix to JD. I'm pretty sure I, oh, JD to ephemeris time and ephemeris time to Unix, so I could do it that way. Um, so that is the epoch, that is noon on the, man, this is annoying. Okay, hang on one second here while I, I think maybe one of the other ones then actually prints Unix time. Or if it doesn't, it's about to. Uh, uh, let's actually go ahead and BC equator dump 2, which probably does something completely different. Um, Pomodoro time, back in 2 and 2. And we're almost back. And we're back. So let's see what this program outputs. And... Uh, also Julian date. So let's... If I knew how to use C options, that would be great, wouldn't it? Um... Let's see. There we go. ET to Unix. Right ascension and declination. So that is... Uh, let's see. Okay. Da -da -da -da. Uh, although this is technically the equinox and equ equator, equator of the date. Um which is not great, although, <coughs> excuse me, um, although this also goes by 60 seconds at a time, so that might be more useful. Uh, <laughs> okay. And I actually do get the feeling that I'm not doing this uh, correctly. The correct way to do this might be to use Horizons, actually, uh, instead of using um, Stellarium or using, uh, well, C Spice should give me the same results, but what I'm doing right now is sort of an inefficient way of doing that. I probably need a program that just gives me the position of something um, given some, so this is 2020-08-17. Um, yeah, this might be, this might not be what I want. I mean, um, or Gemini. Yeah, this, this might not actually be, um, ideal. Uh, oh, let's let's see what we can do with it. Um, we might be able to we might be able to fix it. 
Now, what I would love to do... Oh, no, 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 don't go away. I'd love to see that in decimal form. Um, which they do not have. We can get that. And I guess we're going to do decimal form. We might as well do, like, um, radian form or something. But let's see. Um... So the right ascension here, and the declination in there. And uh, yeah, we probably want to do a little bit more uh, pream uh, pream preemptory, preamble, pre-decision, I don't know, work, because this, I don't actually know Yeah, let's see. Okay, well... We have the data we need here. Um, and in theory, we could always multiply... I mean, we could always get these into... Um, we could always get these into decimal RA and, and declination. That's not a problem, so let's see if we can do... Alright, well, let's do this. Um, I... Wait, wait. Is that... Oh, that's for Gemini, right? Not Gemma. Okay, so the... Uh, let's go ahead and do this. The... Um, RA on the date is... 1.56 over 3600 um, over 12 times I hope calc understands what pi is it does not but mathx probably does in fact I'm sure it does um, so the, the right ascension there is going to be in radians Uh, let's get it out to like 20 digits worth of position. Seriously? Because... of that. Um, so in fact, we could do this and it should give us an exact answer. Yeah. Alright, so that's the, uh, that's the right ascension, is a radian in decimals. Uh, that we're going to use that to subtract um, from the given uh, the given um, right ascension of um, Dido. Okay, let's get the uh, death. Let's get the da -da -da. let's get the <laughs> declination going there. Twenty-seven plus forty-five over sixty plus on date this is seventeen point one over thirty-six hundred or because we want to do this, that. So that's the declination in as an exact number. Um, 180 degrees in pi radians. So this will give us... Wait. I think I copied the wrong thing there. I meant to copy this, the, uh, the ugly looking uh, number that we need. Okay, now we'll do the same thing for this guy. And go ahead and get 20 digits on this thing. Okay. And then... Ooh, that's... We probably should have done something about that. But anyway, ignore it. Um, let's see where we were. Oh, you know what I think I was here when I was doing this? Um, yeah. So what we want now is... The, uh, the zeroth field... I think I can do this without even doing... Um, uh, so we want the time, that's this. Then we want the zero, one, two, three, fourth field... 
minus this, the right ascension of iota gamma, Gemini, then we'll put another space in there, and then the fifth field minus this um, lovely number here, which is the declination. So I think that should do something. Yep. And it would be nice if I actually gave it something to, to loop through, such as that book.txt. Okay, and you can see it's very, very far off right here. Um, I guess we could probably skip to 2020.08. We're getting closer. Still not that close. Oh, wait. 2020.08. There we go. Uh, still pretty far. And actually, we probably should go all the way to... Um, we said it was the 17th at 6.40 a.m. So let's go all the way to 08.17. Uh, or 08.17 with a dot after it, so it's the day. There we go. Okay. So now we're getting really, really close. Um, good, we're getting into where we have to use scientific notation. Uh-oh. Uh, we said 640 and we passed that, didn't we? Um, and this number does get pretty small here, uh, as does this one. Um, they're getting smaller. Uh, which worries me. Okay, still getting smaller. Smaller. At some point, one of these is going to... Oh, okay, here we go. So this one got all the way down to here and then started increasing again. Well, this one's still going down, um, but... Um... But it's, I don't know if that's enough, of a small enough of a, uh, of a distance. I mean, that is, um, like, that is one hundred thousandth of a radian there. Um, which is about fifty-seven hundred thousandth of a degree, which is tiny. But I don't know how big, I mean, we can find out how big this is, but it's still pretty small, actually. I mean, it's about ten times this size, but still pretty small. So, um... So the question is, um, how close does does this get to? Uh, how close do, does Dido get to um, get to Iota Gemini? And the answer is, unfortunately, I do not know. Let's look at the asteroid thing again. Although, if they're going to be using some like VSOP coordinates for the asteroids that's not going to help us. Um, mm, let's do this. Well, that's not good at all. And let's see. Uh, Uh, tools, plugin, solar system editor, configure, input. Wow. Do we really have all that? Let's find out, I guess. Oh, solar system editor. Uh, oh, wow. Configure. Um, um, import, okay, well, that's not what I wanted. Um, well, let's just see what the hell's in this file right now. I mean, already got the stuff we need. 
Ooh, shiny. Oh, wow. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Um... Mm, not looking good. Dido is not in there. Okay, no, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to no. know. Oh. Interesting. Um... Okay, and let's do that. Um, um, let's see. Distant centaurs and trans-Neptunians. Wow, there's a lot of these suckers. I think these are the ones I want because the one I'm looking at is 2000, but let's just see if there's one for um, bright minor planets at opposition in 2000. Critical list numbered minor planets, list of observable. All right, well, let's just do that. Um, is Dido in here? I don't know. Maybe. This looks like it's pretty good, though. It's not, but let's go ahead and do this. Uh, mark all. Add objects. And that should take a little while there, but it should be okay. Okay, let's see what else we can get from here. Minor, critical, distant, unusual. Hmm. I think the numbering system they're using here is not the, well, let's go ahead and do it anyway, is not necessarily the um, same as the uh, NAIF ID system. Uh, but I could be wrong, so let's see what happens. Um, it's apparently in progress now. I probably should have just gotten everything. Um, that's not I don't think that's what I want, though. Let's see, is it is Dido in there? No, it is not. Uh, let's go ahead and do mark all of them. Add the objects in there. And this should really fuck up Stellarium pretty good. I wonder if I can do a search across files when we get back to the main menu here. Um, and I guess while I'm doing that, I might as well also look up to see what is what is the um, the Wikipedia entry on Dido. Not the singer, not the, um, not the uh, Greek god, or whatever. A very large main belt asteroid. Yeah. Um, oh, it's been around for a while. Um, okay. Okay. Mm so that should be fairly visible. Okay, apparently we've we've timed out Stellarium. It's um it's thinking while it loads this. Um kind of an open question then, uh, as to how we we prove or how we, you know, try to demonstrate that um something is close to a star and claim that they don't have the uh, they don't have the correct data. Um, and I probably shouldn't have been downloading to a um, to a mounted drive, but that's prob that might be okay. Um, well, I guess we can go back up here to, s to Firefox and say um, Dido occults. Iota Gemini. Hmm. Although technically it's Iota Geminis or whatever, Geminis or whatever. Um, 
not Iota Gemini. Um, but let's see. Well, let's just see if we have anything for Dido Occults. Yeah, that's not what I was looking for. Uh, well, does Dido Occult anything that's a star? Must include Dido. Um, okay, okay, so we have a little bit of here. Um, okay. So it looks like maybe they do know about the, uh, the all the occultations of Dido, uh, but unfortunately, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we are back. So it does look like um, the occultation of Dido, uh, rather the occultation by Dido, is known. We haven't found something new. And we've apparently made Stellarium very sad. Because it is, it is stuck. So we'll minimize that for now in the hope that it gets caught up with something. Um, oh wow, no, it's it's doing something. Um, okay, maybe. So maybe that's just going to take some time there. Yeah, this this might have been a mistake. We um, let's see how much uh, data we're getting there. None of this was, by the way, on the plan for today. Uh, the um, you know, 71 megabytes, we'll let it keep going. Uh, none of this was actually on the plan for today. This was just sort of a uh, sidestep uh, to see if we had found something or I had found something that uh, occultations.org hadn't, but apparently not, although I still want to look into that some more. Um, we will go back to what we were doing before. Excuse me what we were doing before, which was semantic annotations. Let's see. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and go back to semantic annotations, which is what I wanted to do in the first place. Um, gosh, I wish I remember what the hell it was, though. MetaWiki? Local, yeah, there it is. Okay, so I think what we'd figured out um, is we really have two different types of... <coughs> 
I just coughed into my hand, so no worries. Uh, we have two different types of semantic annotations. Uh, one is that uh, both sides of the uh, property are objects, and the other one is that the left side of the object of the property is an object, but the right side is like a literal, like a string or a number or something. Um, and then also because of the format I'm using, whoa, 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 yo mama, that is really shiny. Hopefully this will mean that Stellarium was coming back to us. Okay. And hopefully it also means I haven't really effed things up a whole bunch, but let's find out here. Um, no, apparently it's going to have to do this load again. So back it goes. We'll probably just kill it once it gets back. Okay, um, so we had this sort of uh, understanding that uh, we have now two different types of, of properties. One where the result is a literal, and the other where the result is another object. So we can go back to this. Um, and I don't think we've changed this to be um, to use that new uh, that new format. Well, actually, let's do this a little bit more here. Um, and this should return. Okay. So this the above here should return z the object. And the object should be linked to the every page is an object, so it should be linked to the page that refers to that object. Here. Uh, we just want to return a string, plain string. And I think that these cases up here actually apply to these cases as well. So we can do that. Um, so expand dates, okay, create semantic triples. Um, okay. So this data here, expand dates just takes multiple dates and puts them into um, puts them into separate lines. So I guess if we do this, we should start seeing debug i. Um, and then we can sort of look to see what we're doing here. Jesus Christ, this is being weird. Okay. Let's go over. Nope, not here. Do we, have a, we do have a spare little thing here. MetaWiki rehash. You see MetaWiki local debug. Um... Uh, MetaWiki pbs.txt, is that what I'm using? Yeah. And we will put that to less, and let's see what these are. Pushing, pushing, pushing. I think maybe we don't need the pushing anymore. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, so these are the lines that are being broken up. Um, and the only thing we have to worry about is that a property can either be connecting two objects or connecting an object to a, to a literal. And we do kind of need to keep track of that. We also probably want to keep track of, um, we don't rest necessarily, if both sides are an object, we do want to keep track of both of the objects. But if one side is a string, we don't necessarily need to keep track of the string as though it were an object. Okay. Uh, so we find the letter, which is a date. Okay, good. We will ignore multi-refs for now. Um, okay. So parse triple date dollars. Okay, so this is a parse triple. Uh, and this, I think, is where we need to make some of our changes. Um, because we will, n we may have cases where this is set equal to instead of, instead of always a double colon. So let's see, let's see what we want from here. Um, we cannot rely on that. Uh, let's see, parse triple. Okay. So it might be that we want to look for, um, uh, let's see, so we could, uh, okay, I think maybe we need, did I, well, yeah, we did do cases here, basically, um, okay, Trying to figure out how to do this correctly. Um, so I guess what we're going to say here is fudge. Okay. The problem here, here is we need to split by both either 
colon colon or by colon equal sign. And if, depending on how we do it, it's going to be different. So I guess we're going to do it like this. Uh, get first, get x, and decide if this is... Um, no, I guess it's not going to... Well, shit. So should we ever have something that's just looking like an x? I mean... Um, let's see. We might be able to fix this up a little bit. In other words, we might be able to force it so that it, this is always in a triple form. Okay. So. Mm. If only one colon... Uh, if only one double colon. And let's see. So we have possibility of two double colon. Uh, treat source as um, as x. Okay. So string equals. Um, this. Um, I think this pipe sign we can ignore for now. We can just do this. So if uh, double, double colons, if string equals substitute something, colon, something, colon, something. Um, this actually doesn't matter what we put here. And we do want to slurp the whole string on the off chance that if there's anything left over, we know we've done something wrong. Um, and here we need to declare my x, y, and z ahead of time. Okay. Um, okay. I'm almost tempted to put this um, in a separate subroutine, but let's go ahead and do this. Uh, equals dollar sign one, dollar sign two, dollar sign three. Else if string. Now this is going to be the property case. Oh, and um, type. And then type will be object. Uh, because this is an object to object connection. Now the same thing, except we have a set equal to in there somewhere. So we'll do the same thing here, almost, except we have something set equal to something set equal to equal. Um, I'm going to go ahead and be careful and go ahead and backslash that. And we still have the same, um, same split, except now type is equal to uh, literal. Okay. So this gets rid of the cases where we have either colon, 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 or colon, 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 equal. So the two remaining cases are just one colon, um, in which case we have this, basically. Bunch of stuff, colon, colon, dot, star, question mark, get rid of everything, um, then x, y, and z are equal to the source, and then dollar sign one, dollar sign two, uh, and again, this the ne the other case here would be if this is a, um, and we could do do another way of splitting this. If this is basically a colon equal sign here, we can handle that case very similarly. And I just made a mistake there, but let's go ahead and uh, and here the type will still be object. This is really really ugly. I'm not liking this code. Uh, and this is just the minor code to get to the real code. Uh, and if that's a dollar sign colon uh, equal, then we have um, dollar sign source. We still have the same thing. It's just the only thing that changes here is the um, it's a literal. Okay. So now the question is, could we have any other? Th the un only other case that could possibly occur is one with no colons, and I 
don't think um, we should never have that case. So we will look for it. Um, could not parse string. In that case, we will just go ahead and return out of the whole function. Okay, so now. Um, I think we can return out of this. Oh, I just want to sort of see what, what we actually get out of this. Um, so we will debug x, y, z, t. X, Y, Z, type. Um, and I'll put in testing here so we know that we need to keep doing something. Let's see what that does, assuming that even works. Um, I think maybe pushing is no longer necessary. Let's see where I have that pushing. Um, no, I think I think we got that down. Let's do this now. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, gender male. Uh, is male is, is actually male a? Um, yeah, because we do want to look to see if we ever want to see male characters. We we do want to keep male as an object. We, the things we don't want to ever see as characters will be like notes, where the string is just something not very useful. Um, okay, so let's just see if there's any case where we could come up with that warning, which is um, could not parse. Um, oh, that's not good. Okay, um, so goat rat. Okay, and the so let's see. Oh, okay, so when I'm doing things like that, I, um, okay, so this would be notes set equal to, um, so if that is the case, what am I doing there? I think I just want to link it, right? I mean, hmm. Um... Okay, so what happens basically is we get the notes, we set the notes for this equal to that, or we it, we add the notes. Um, and... Yes, yeah, so I think if we have nothing but just uh, double bracket something, double bracket, we can just return the thing itself. Um, And we don't even need to put a type in it because um, because it's necessarily it doesn't matter because we're returning out of the function anyway. Um, okay, so then um, let's see. So now we have our x, y, and z as always being defined correctly. So that's good. Um, let's see. Now let's see what this does really, really should be doing this in more random order. Um, mm -hmm. um, okay. I do want to see if we ever get ISBN as a, um, there we go, yeah, very nice. Okay, so now I think we are ready to, um, to boogie with this. So, so the first thing we're going to do is, um, to store whether properties are literal or object to object. Come 
my props. Okay. So now what we can do here is Okay. So let's see. If what we're doing is a literal, uh, sorry, is an object, then we just need to add the uh, the triple, the reverse triple, um, and return um, dollar sign z in double brackets. I think. Um, I hope that doesn't put us into an infinite loop. Okay, so if type equals liter uh, equals object. Um, Oh shit, we still have to deal with the fact that it's possible that they have plus signs in them. Okay, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. Okay, and we're almost back. Oh, and I guess over here we wanted to return um, that. Now that actually might create a uh, loop, so let's see what happens. Actually, let's see if this... Yeah. Um... So I think we need to return something like something that's not that means the same thing but isn't exactly equal to the same thing. So yep. Okay. Um So I think that's good. It's worries me a little bit here it says chastise is blank for not taking it in the last planet we learned because he's still posing as a unicorn. Um, so character Patty. Uh, oh, I guess we haven't returned from from the other cases yet, so that's okay. Because um, right now we are returning blank in those other cases. Okay, so now we <laughs> we have to go ahead and put. Um, we have to go ahead and split them in if they have pluses in them. And then we can say um, whatever I was saying before. Nope, let me oops, yank, meta yank, meta yank. There we go. If type equals object, um, Jesus Christ, this is complicated. Um, I mean, we're going to have to do a triple loop here. And I guess the only difference here is... Um, yeah, I'm not crazy about this. Not at all crazy about this. Um... This code looks very redundant, and I don't like it. Okay, let's see. Let's see what it is that we're. Um, I, I still sense there's something I'm missing that's really big. Um, 
Okay. Um. Yeah, for lines like this are actually kind of weird because the character Pig... Um, so what should happen here is... You know, I think I might have to go from the outside in. That might be actually a requirement here. Because uh, what this should be doing is... Um, this is storyline is Pig the Janitor. Character Pig, though, actually goes on to the outside to these guys. Um, so it's got to be like storyline, pick the janitor, um, yeah, shit, um, yeah, because that character pit, well, shit, no, it does actually still belong here. So what this should parse as is character pig is the innermost. The implicit is the uh, is the date. So we get character pig on all of those. Returns. Oh, what it returns will depend on whether a storyline uh, is allowed to have uh, is allowed to have links in it or not. Um, which depends on whether storyline is a literal uh, or a um, or an object to object. It's clearly not an object to object because it's right side here uh, is pig the janitor. Pig the janitor is not a uh, is not an object. So um, so that is correct. So I guess let's see. Trying to um, so I guess every time we have storyline, we actually need to change this to. Um, uh, set equal, which I think I can manage. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, so I guess storylines are are allowed to have links in them because. Well, crap. I think there might be a contradiction here. So I think storylines... Each storyline is an object in and of itself. And I might have just pissed this guy off that he's not going to host anything anymore. But I think, I think storylines... Each storyline is itself considered an object. So... Let's take a look, though, if we can connect here. Or not, you know, whatever. Uh, let's take a look. Storylines here. Yep, I think each storyline is a page, so we really should not... Um, okay. So I guess if each storyline is a page, the the object has to be considered the parsed version of whatever is on the right side. Man, that's complicated. Yeah, each of these are objects. They're pages, so they're objects. Okay, so let's go ahead and maybe um, here in README format give some examples. Uh, and this is more because I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Okay, so let's do this one. Uh, adds the following triples. Um, okay, well, let's let's not worry about the multiple date thing here. Let's just call this like that. Um, so there's this. Storyline, pig the janitor. Um, I guess I'll call this object object. Okay. And then this also does. Right, so how am I parsing this though? 
Mm. Yeah, let's be a little bit more careful here. Character pig yields. Because it has nothing else in front of it, it has to yield um, character pig and returns okay, crap. Yeah, the problem here is its return value actually depends on what it is being contained by. Um, so if it's being contained by a set equal to sign, it could very easily return um, the linked pig, but because it's connecting to a storyline, which is object-to-object, uh, object, it must return the string pig. Um, that is just awful. So you cannot parse from the inside out because you need knowledge of what is the outside. That is just hideous. So how do we handle that? Um, the problem is we're going to have to handle it with recursion, which I don't really like. Um, because it, it could create a stack problem. Uh, plus, we should be able to change it to iterative. So I guess what we would look for is the most outermost set of these things, the double brackets. Uh, take this, um, parse it into um, uh, because this is a storyline. Da da da. This would be this um, storyline, and because the right side here is a um, because this is an object, this would just become pig the janitor. Um, there's something fundamentally stupid about that. Something I don't like about that. Um, because we shouldn't need, we shouldn't need outside context to resolve the inside. So the right side is going to become pig the janitor. I mean, character pig resolves to pig. Uh, the only question, though, is um, whether pig should be linked or not linked. Um, and I guess what we could pass back is that pig is linked, but then if you see any links on the right side of something um, that what should be an object, then we unlink it. That is really ugly. Um, so we basically pass up the hint that this thing could be linked, um, but it doesn't have to be linked. Um, just effing ugly there. All right. But I think I know what we're doing now. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. I'm still not convinced this is the right way to do things. Um. And another th and the other issue here is if we um, if the, the the source happens to be your your x, you might as well just use parse states here. There's no point in um, there's no point in calling parse states separately. And so the reason the plus thing could be really bad is. Um, so if you have something like this, um, let's call it a plus b plus c, uh, colon d, colon e, um, you can't really break this up into three things 
uh, because then you would have E printed three times. So that's that's why this is really kind of ugly. Um, so that's that's why this is this is not very nice. Okay, let's see. Um, And I still don't like the fact that I am, I mean, I could in here check for the equal sign as a fourth parameter and then say if dollar sign $4 uh, equals um, blah, 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 then type equals object. Otherwise, t oh, that actually wouldn't be that difficult, would it? Um, okay, hang on. Mm. So the type could actually be colon or equal sign. Okay, so hang on, that could actually work. So either colon or equal sign. Oh, hang on, shit. Colon or equal sign, capture, and then type is just whatever that fourth. Uh, no, type is going to be the third capture. And uh, so it's going to be T and then Z. And we don't need that anymore. And we might as well call this T for type just because to make things confusing. And so we don't need this anymore. Okay, so then if the string is equal to this, this, okay. And this can be either a colon or an equal sign. And then we have um, x, y, this will be t now, the type. And this will be like this. And then we don't need this case anymore either. And then the only case left is if there's no co double columns in it at all. Uh, we return link string, which is good. Um, and the only kind of difference we need to do here is um, Is we can declare uh, dollar sign. We can declare uh, list x here. So we can say um, um, okay, crap. So here we can definitely say you know x is equal to parse states of source. The only problem is um, that we don't want to redefine it here then. So I guess we'll have to do it this way. So here, if this is the case, we want x to be that. Otherwise, parse states of Dawson x. Okay, that should have cleaned things up a lot. So we don't need to run parse states anymore. Um. Or are we doing parse dates? Expand dates. All right, let's see what we're actually calling expand dates. Um, interesting. Okay. And I think we can just get away with splitting on the new line. Okay. And then just create semantic triples. And expand dates will eventually be phased out. Uh, something tells me this is not going to work. Uh, parsed, okay. Okay, and so now here we have uh, the... Um, The four, the four i, four j, four k loops. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah, 
this is this is a nightmare. Um, I mean, this would be very, very simple here. Well, maybe we can assume that Z will never have a plus sign in it. Um, and if it does, we can handle that. But for right now, we can pretend that never happens. Uh, so we can just go through I and J. And then Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we are back. Okay. Let's go ahead and parse this a little bit better. I'll go ahead and do a quick BC git. Uh, just so we have this backed up before I mess it up even more. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and do parses as follows. Character pig adds triple this guy, returns. This, where we, this is where we have to be careful. Link pig. So now we have. Um, now the problem here is, um, yeah, the, the ugly problem here is the fact that this is a storyline means we have to edit this to be just pig the janitor uh, getting rid of the link before we can add the triple. So that's a very ugly sort of thing to do um, by using the property to edit the, the value or the object before we add it as a, as a link. So that is, that is quite, quite hideous. So this is probably why I went from an inside to, you know, out, um, uh, outside to in approach. Uh, let's see if we can do that one. Um, Let's see if we can do that one that is uh, actually uh, uh, in a way that's non-recursive. Uh, so we could say this, 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 okay. So inside of this we have storyline character pig the Janet. Um, it's whatever the return value of this is uh, and then unlinked. And um,
Okay, so I guess one thing we could do is when we're calling this, um, we could decide whether or not we want the uh, parsing to be linked or unlinked. We might be able to pass that on as a parameter. Um, into the function um, parse triple. Um, okay, okay. Mm, okay. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Um, so I guess in the initial call, the question would be, um, Mm. Uh, yeah, we still wouldn't know though because we still would have to look at the um we still would have to look at to see whether this is a um all right. Um no, you know what? I think we can handle this by looking at the um the the Property, whatever the property, whatever the uh, the y is here. Um, well, actually, you know whether it's a set equal to or an equal to. We could probably. Um, no, we cannot use that um, because we're going out. Um, okay. This should not be this hard, but one of the problems about saying something shouldn't be that hard is you get caught up uh, in trying to do it an easy way, and that means you don't do it at all, which is bad. So, um, okay, so we have this. We, this this is, doesn't make sense anymore, but um, we do need to loop through all of these, and we probably can't we define x like this because we already have it defined like this um, so we have this and then we can just say for j or for i well we'll just say j and k just to keep things simple in y and z um, Yeah, we're not being recursive here, so we really don't need a, um, it doesn't make sense to pass on a um, uh, linked or unlinked a, a function because uh, that doesn't, that doesn't, okay. Um, um, uh, oh, I guess the 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 uh, the second thing that's set equal to um, those are those are global for all of these so that actually might be useful um, okay so if dollar sign t equals equal boy you gotta love that this means it's an object object um, and So we do want to return the second thing as a um, as a page reference as a link. So then we would have triples. Oh, then yeah. and for J and Y for K in Z. Well, Z is a fun, funner thing to say. Triples dollar sign. Ah, uh, crap. We still need to go through X, don't we? Um, yeah, we still need to go through X. Okay. Okay. 
that's lots of fun. Okay, so we have the triples that we need. Uh, this is object object, so it's oh no, I'm sorry. Um, this is object object. So in this case, we are adding semantic triples um, and just setting the value equal to one. And then over here, we do the same thing, but with negative dollar sign j also equal to one. Um, and now the question is, what the hell do we return from this? Uh, if there's more than one K, I think we can just, for right now, we can just return dollar sign Y out of this whole mess. Um, oh no, actually we have to finish all these loops first. Da, 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 and then, because it's colon colon, uh, we want to return the, the, um, the second part, as a, we want to return y as a link. That's not going to do what I want. Um, I mean z, of course, as a link. Okay. And then, similar but different case here. If t is a property, then we same thing, same thing. Da da da. Except here we don't do a negative. We just say i j k. Well, actually i j. Equals dollar sign k. Or actually, just to be safe, dot in case there's more than one, dot equals dollar sign k. But there's one thing we have to check here. Um, We have to set that here y is something that connects objects, where here something y is something that connects. Um, yeah, this could get really messy. Let's go ahead and just do this for right now. Uh, but that's not really correct. And then because the right side is a um, is a literal, we should just be able to do this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hang on. This should be the... Oh, okay, what the hell? This should be the end of this function. Uh, let's see. This should be the end of the if. And then parse triple here. No, what the hell? Oh, maybe it's just complaining because it doesn't like how I indented things. And then here... This crap is wow, no longer. Still probably won't work. Parse dates called. Okay, not a pro. Expand dates, of course, is what I meant. Uh, let's make sure expand dates does what I want. Um, let's see. No, 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 I want parse date list. So I do want, um, parse date list here. And then hopefully we can get rid of, okay, so what does this do? That's not too bad, actually. Um, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I guess we don't need to debug I anymore. Let's just see. I guess this is going to just tell us what, it, what everything comes out to be. Um, mm, I think I forgot to reverse the, uh, the, in the negative, I forgot to reverse the, the order of the, uh, of the side. So this should be K minus J dollar sign I. And one other thing, I guess, if J is a, um, 
if we're going object to object, then there, uh, there shouldn't be any links inside of of k, um, because the the target has to be a page, and that can't. So equal substitute link parentheses dot oops, dot star dot, always gotta love this dot star question mark to, with just dollar sign one globally. Okay, fantastic. Um, however, in this case, it is okay to return a link. So one more time. Um, okay. Mm we need to do something about the double braces, but I'm, I'm not too worried about that yet. Um, okay. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to maybe look at a random, by random I mean not random, line and see if it gets got parsed correctly. And the answer is no, of course it didn't. Um, well, let's do this one real quick here. Uh, crash of rhinos, just so let's see what notes we have for 2003, 03, 06 if I can type. Okay. No, it's a crash of rhino. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, it's in two different books, I guess. That's suspicious-ish, but maybe not. Let's see. Sergeant. So that's all the ones from this era. And this little piggy stayed home. Okay, so it's definitely in that one, and it looks like it is in both of these. Um, that does not look correct. This looks like this should be a... Yeah, because it looks like each book's taking about 10 months, and this here, whoa, um, yeah, this sh up here should probably be 2002-1006. Um, no, this is too, wait, are these, are there overlapping books here? We would better leave that alone. Um, all right, let's look at, let's go ahead and put this into a, um, into a debug. Okay. And let's look at this. Let's see what this is looks looks like here. Okay, so the thing I'm looking for from here is it's got characters rat pig and pinket human. Yep. Good. It has the death of pinket human. Good. Uh, and Pinkett Human has a note for him, which would not show up here in this page, um, saying that he is probably human. But that would not show up under this. Um, Pinkett, yep, yep, very nice. Okay. Getting a little confidence into this thing. All uh, right, let's look at... I guess we should have to be sorting these randomly, shouldn't we? Um, uh, although, the, really, the more ugliness it has, the better it is. Um, I guess we're definitely going to have to handle the double brace season somehow. Um, so the double braces could just be... Uh, so how should I treat that? Should that be... 
Uh, okay, so that should be something, colon, 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 the, the Fidel Castro, whatever it is at the end. Um, but what does that actually belong to? So if the description is just going to be a Wikipedia page, I mean, it's going to be a, a a landing page that goes to Wikipedia. Um, I guess that would just be Pomodoro back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. Okay. So I guess this would say Fidel Castro is a page. But we somehow need to mark the fact that he is also... Um, that he's also in the class Wikipedia. Now, the, the obvious way to do that would be Fidel Castro colon colon class colon colon WP, but that would print out WP. So I'm going to do something really stupid here that I know I'm going to regret. I'm going to go ahead and flip it and say, um, and let me go ahead and BC get this since it is working. Okay, um... So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say um, okay. and we're going to do this as WP negative class. Uh, WP is a kind of the, the class, and it's going to be of. Um, well, I still haven't handled the uh, the little this thing, have I? Oh well, we'll deal with that. Um, hmm. Um, these should not be separate from each other. Yeah, this should just be one big thing here. We will handle the, um, so this is brace, brace, anything, and brace, and brace, and that will be, um, globally. Okay. Still need to handle the, um, the actual literal um, uh, 
little pipe character, meaning... So this probably shouldn't be printing these with pipes, then. I should probably be printing them... Um, not with commas... With slashes? Why do I get the feeling that's a bad idea? Not with dots, but with slashes. All right, let's try that. Oops, no, 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 no. WP hermaphrodite. Yeah, and this is what I was worried about. We get double, n we get a double negative going there, but we can fix that. Uh, okay, what the hell is it looking at? Ooh, shiny. That was very strange. I don't care. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so now we're going to go back to pbs.txt. We're, we're, we're still supposed to be looking at this stuff randomly. We're not. Um, I'm trying to find ones that are more complicated here. Uh, that is to have, has most level of... Okay, this one might be interesting. So this has a description. Uh, pig starts the super... Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay. Does that the character does that neighbor Bob in it? I'm looking at the wrong one. Look. Um okay, book. Uh, it's in that book, it's in the other book. It's probably in two books, that's fine. Uh, okay, description. Pig starts the super terrific dudes, whose acronym is unfortunately um S T D. And this is probably where we need to be a little bit careful. This is where we need to uh, fix what gets returned. Uh, let's see. So now, does that also say that pig is in this? Um. Okay, and this does not claim that pig is a character. It just he happens to be in the description with the with a link. Um, okay. So the only weirdness here is if there's a pipe sign in the, um, the thing that gets printed. Mm. And let's see what that's supposed to do. So I guess that's the one case where... Um... And that link should not be... That's not correct. Because that should have come out as... That should have come in as... Um, STD... No, Wikipedia... Class... Class... Wait, what? Hang on. That may not have come out correctly. That should have been... Changed... Okay. I guess I need to look what happens to it after I do this terrible thing to it. And this one I'll just do with a minus minus to bug less. And I want to see what happens to the super terrific dudes. WP. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not cool. Um... Oh. Oh, Shitsky, hang on. What is my convention for WP? Am I doing this wrong? Oh. Oh. Okay, so no, I'm doing this. I'm doing WPs very differently. Okay, so that actually I screwed. Th I f I un I broke that actually, from what it was. So it is uh, this pipe thingy and dot star question mark. Then that. So that is going to become the um, the class of two. 
of dollar sign two is going to be dollar sign one. So that would say um, dollar sign two class. Okay, yeah, that should that should be what I wanted. Um. Um, okay, that's probably okay, because that should go to the page STD, and the only other thing I know about that is that the STD uh, class is WP, which, uh, Wikipedia, which is fine. So that is good. And let's go ahead and fix up attempt debug, and let's look to see if we can find someone that's reasonably complicated. Uh, okay, if I can talk. Okay, let's see. Um... All right, well, this one's not too complicated, but let's just see if we got all of the stuff we want in there. Um, oh, shit, we're still doing the debug of the data, so let me undo that. And do this again. And do this again. Okay, it's in this book, it's in this book. Category, third wall. I might have gotten that from somewhere else. Um, actually, I'm curious as to where I would have that. 2004-0621. Okay, I'll believe that. Uh, okay, so does it have all the characters we need? Character, Celia L, pig. Rat. Um, and this fact would be about Celia L. Human, not about this, uh, not about um, this strip in particular. And yeah, location San Francisco. But. No, San Fr that's fine. San Francisco is a um, is a link uh, because location is a um, object connector. And the only thing now I want to make sure is that San Francisco's class is WP. Um, yeah. Again, minus minus class needs to be fixed, but that's okay. Um, okay. Alrighty, uh, let's see. I'm looking for something where we have a lot of nested, um, nested, uh, brackets. Um, I guess we need to handle multi-refs next. Um, okay, well, let's see what Bobby Humans... Um, let's see what information we have on him in the database. Uh, okay, he's a character. Uh, his profession is student and weather vane. Cool. Now the question is, do we want student and weather vane to be objects? Uh, I mean, then we can find out everyone who's a student, I guess. Um, that would be weird. Okay, this one's actually sort of interesting. Uh, we learned that Lablary's wife's name is... So let's see what we know about Frida. Um, a 
Okay, so now this should not have happened. We should not have a link link here. Although I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so how did that happen? So we went inside of here, character Frida Crocodile, because wife is an object to object connector. Uh, that should not have been parsed like that. Okay. We learn that my wife's name is my wife, character Frida Crocodile. So that should have added a character to the to the um, 2005 614. Uh, because it connects objects, though, Frida Crocodile should have ended up unlinked there. So this should have gone from this to um, yeah. Let's go ahead and look at this. This this could be an important example. Um, format. Failing example below should go. Um, Free the crocodile. And return. Um, And it would not have a link in it because we are looking at it as an object. So this should be correct. Um, yeah, there's no reason that Frida should be linked at all, much less double linked. Okay. So. Um, I guess we're going to have to be a little bit more verbose about what we're doing here. Parse triple. Oh, ouch. Okay, hang on. Um, because we're calling it over and over again. I guess we're good to have it... Um, do I use link text anywhere? Probably not, but I do need to. Um... The only problem is that does not tell me what is being added. Um, to the triples. Well, I guess we could say that right here because that's the only place we add. Nope, it is not the only place we add triples. Uh, let's see, triple, triple, triple. If it's, if it's calling, calling, we remove the link, otherwise we do not. Okay, well, I'm beat. Uh, let's see how long I'm going. Oh yeah, good two hours. Alright, thank you for watching the stream, and I may be back, or I may not be back.